Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, this is the, uh, the webinar concerning the mobile mapping essential series on the publishing and sharing your data online uh, with uh, uh, TMX. And um, I don't have any one presenting me, so I'll try to start all this session on my own and introducing myself. I think you are able to see uh, I think you're not able to, to, I think you should be able to see my screen actually. And uh, so please send me a note in case you, you, you can't do that. And uh, I just go through, I will just start with. So my name is, uh, my name is, uh, is uh, Marco Bello. And um, uh, I'm just introducing myself. I am based in Italy. I'm working in Trimble since 19 years now. And I am a technical sales engineer for the land mobile mapping portfolio and working for the uh, EMEA region. And um, yeah, as I said, this uh, webinar belongs to the mobile map mapping essential series. And uh, the topic which I am going to cover today is, as you can see from the, uh, as I can see from the uh, agenda is uh, um, basically, the kind of use we can we can make of the data set published on a, on a publisher. So once we upload mobile mapping data with vector data or other resources, which kind of use we can uh, we can uh, those. And um, well, um, after that, I will try to show you yeah the different. I will give you some uh, concepts, main concepts about what the publisher is. Then I will go a little bit on the different kind of use we can make out of the publisher. So how we can get access to the data. And through the different platforms, which I will show you, I will try also to highlight the different workflows. So the different way we can consume, we can make use of the data which has been shared or uploaded into the publisher solution. So this is not a webinar where I'm going to describe or to touch the different configuration, the different type of setup of uh, publisher environment, licensing and uh, requirements or stuff like that. So if you are interested on this, these topics, actually you might like to have a look to the already available webinars which have been done from colleagues on these subjects. Um, which are available on spatial.trimble.com webinars mobile mapping. Uh, so this is where you should go uh, if you're also interested on this uh, different aspect. Now, uh, going to the subject of this webinar, the main concept around the publisher. So the publisher is a server-based platform, basically, with which you can uh, share, you can upload and you can share with colleagues and customers other uh, organizations, uh, the division in your, in your company, you can, you can share the mobile mapping data itself, which could be uh, trajectory data, um, mobile mapping, like point cloud data, imageries, data as well. But also, why not UAV data sets, maybe internal scanning, internal indoor mapping data sets into, into, a, cli into, into a cloud, basically a cloud type of environment. And this data, once available into the server, is made available to different kind of uh, different type of users or different groups of users. And you, as administrator of this uh, installation of this setup, can decide the one who can get access and what actually uh, each people uh, who has gotten access, what you can actually do. Just viewing the data, just inspecting those, or why not maybe even doing measurement directly on the in this kind of uh, in this publisher environment and um, once the data is uploaded into uh, publisher once data has been uh, yeah, published uh, you have different way to get access to this data and this is where basically uh, my webinar is going uh, to to focus um, the most uh, direct way or the uh, yeah, the most direct way to get access is as soon as you have the link to this publication, you very simply open an internet browser, type in the, uh, the address, provide if needed your login username and password, and then you are jumping into 
this street view like kind of environment. Another way is uh, making use of uh, specific uh, plugins. Some are already available, like for Esri products, like for Autodesk, for QGIS. And uh, once you install these plugins into in one of these uh, data management software solutions, you can bring your publication or your mobile mapping data directly into your main production software. Um, another way is making use of specialized applications, which means uh, there is SDK available, which enables you to create your own um, to create your own application and uh, embedded into your main software, the main data management software so that you can bring, again, your mobile mapping data directly into your specific own platform, software data management platform. So this is the, the, the main, I would say, three ways to, to get access to the publisher data. And uh, as I said, I will try to show you a little bit of, uh, of, of this. So this is a uh, this is a uh, this is the the topic which I am going to uh, I'm going to show you. So this is the main concept. The three different graph type of uh, of groups. I just started sharing a uh, share my screen right now. Okay. So the the browser the browser access. Actually, I was not quite sure that I've been sharing my screen earlier, uh, but I think I'm doing it now. I apologize if the very first two slides were not. Um, again, so let's start from the access through the to the browser. So um, as soon as you got an account from the publisher administrator, um, you open your into the browser, provide the IP address, and then you are connected to your publication. And once you're in the publication, you are able again to navigate into your data set. You can navigate through the vector data, which maybe have been uploaded on the publication as well. And then you can do basically your own checks. You can verify the measurement, you can verify the data which has been already uploaded. From this point of view, actually, uh, the publisher uh, is maybe not really a production tool, uh, is mostly uh, a solution which enables you share information, uh, as I said earlier, to different organizations or different offices, or maybe to your end customers. Um, so again, it's mostly sharing solution, probably not really a production uh, environment. And let me maybe just show you exactly what you can you can do once you're in the publisher and which tools are made available for the for the user who connect to the data. So what I'm doing right now is just I'm going to connect to one publication, and this is the one which I will make use for um, for the different different um, or the different um, interface which I'm going to which I'm going to introduce. Um, once I'm logged in, this is MX9 mobile mapping data sets. Um, as you can see, I have a point cloud view on the top. I have a camera view, a spherical view on, on the back. And I have my visualization of this uh, RGB colorized point cloud. And, uh, and from here, I can navigate into the point cloud environment or in my spherical images, spherical image environment. And uh, um, one nice tool which you can use to make life easy navigation is maybe just synchronizing the view. So basically, if you enable that, um, wherever you are moving or orienting your visualization from the camera or from the point cloud, you see that I am in a nice synchronized view. So everything which is visible in the uh, where I'm focusing or aiming into the point cloud is, is actually what the, the camera is also looking at and um, is also aiming to. And uh, what maybe you have seen or maybe what you have noticed that is that on this data set, on this point cloud as overlay, I have these blue lines. So this is basically lines which has been extracted um, with the uh, TMX asset modeler solution, so which is the production model with which you can create or extract the vector data 
In this case, I have created those and I've uploaded those as well, and these are visible here as resources. And um, the, um, the user connected to the publisher could make use of uh, a selection tool, maybe to, to identify or to uh, analyze some properties of this line. In this case, I don't have really interesting attributes for this just line. I have just an object ID, which has been visible now. But assuming I had maybe a length information or other attribution assigned to this line, I should be able to be, be able to display this into this small uh, in this uh, small window. So this is a resource, a vector data, which has been uploaded by the uh, by the administration of the of the publisher solution. So the one uploaded mobile mapping data also decided to upload and make visible uh, to other uh, users these uh, data sets. Um, similar to this, um, assuming that myself not as administrator but as a user maybe i have a data set which i would like to display as overlay on top of mobile mapping data because maybe i want to see how a project design might fit on top of the reality which is a uh, which can be identified here with the point cloud and the imageries what i could actually do is i could go on resources and by clicking on this open local resource for example, I could select a specific file or a set of files uh, which might uh, which might uh, be representing of uh, I don't know maybe uh, new road signs, a new design of lamppost. I would like just to put as overlay on top of my, my mobile mapping data or stuff like that. So it's not a data set which an administrator should, administrator can upload, but something I can do myself here locally without sharing. To other people this is something which i just would i would just view um, um, myself and uh, once i have the, the mobile mapping data set uploaded of course you have different ways to to display uh to display your data set your point cloud in this case what you can see is that the rgb has been applied to the point cloud and um, and I'm using as a colorization on the point cloud this kind of information. So the RGB, which is uh, applied to uh, to the point cloud. Something interesting is the is the use of uh, annotation. So again, let's assume that I am not the administrator, but maybe I just work for this company, and um, and my administrator uploaded this data set in, the, in this publication and made this available. And I need maybe to navigate through the data and review and, and look if there is any, for example, danger situation or any damage on the New Jersey barrier here or, or something which requires some attention from um, in, uh, in, the, in the project frame. Uh, what I can do is I can make use of annotations. So basically navigating through my data, I can say, oh, there is a damage here or a dangerous situation here on this New Jersey barrier. Actually, I can take annotation and, for example, I could write some here. There is a danger situation. Maybe I would like to colorize this uh, this red. Then I can position my cursor on my mobile mapping data and I can highlight this position and have this annotation created. And I can keep driving in my data set and, uh, and then maybe I notify another one. As soon as I notify another one, maybe I can just uh, Put my cursor again on this area and I can create a new one. So actually I have created two annotations and these annotations once created again not by the administrator but myself as a user I can just go here and I could simply download this as a file O3A is the extension and um, now that I have this file what I could do is now I'm just removing those from the from the from the view from here just delete from the view but what i can do is i can send for example via email this file maybe to the project administrator or maybe another colleague who has access to the same publication and uh, and these other people in the organization can simply once they have downloaded their file they can click on open they just go to the file and just open this so basically you are able to visualize locally again not in the publication but locally on the machine the information or maybe the kind of notifications or annotations which I just sent them via email. So this is a kind of resource which is not created by the administrator but something you do yourself locally and which you can share, for example, transferring 
this kind of file by email. So uh, notification can be, uh, there is different uh, type of notifications. Um, there is, a, you could use some symbols, it could be line, could be textual, but it's also interesting this other one. So basically it's a three, uh, 3D object. A 3D object can be considered as a notification, uh, can be uploaded as a annotation as well. For example, uh, let's assume that we need to uh, change this bridge. Maybe the bridge you can see on screen is an old one, and you would like this to be replaced with a new one for which you have a design. Uh, the design is a, a 3D model, so it's a 3D mesh, um, and, and you have your 3D mesh file. And what I can do is locally, I can simply click on this file, which is visible here. Uh, this is the name of the file which, which is available. And then I can navigate into my point cloud and I could say, okay, maybe I would like to position, I would like to see how the bridge will look like. So you can click on the point cloud. And this has been positioned this way. Of course, it's not really correct. It's not really aligned to, to, the, to the point cloud. So you can, you can click on this object, then I can start you can uh, you can enlarge it you can and then you can start rotating for example and, and once this is done you can uh, of course you can also drop you have different option to position it you can also drop it to the ground uh, but the concept is that as soon as you have um, you have a position at this you can start navigating through oops sorry you can start navigating uh, in your data sets and and just have a look to how your bridge would look like in, in a kind of uh, reality environment and you can see how this is fitting with uh, uh, respect to your imageries or how this is looking in respect to to your point cloud 3d point cloud now this is an annota uh, an annotation which means it's just something you can see as an overlay it's not something where you can measure on top so i cannot make use of this resource for example to measure the possible clearance between these 3d mesh and the and the, and the, and the surface of the road but there is another way you can use a 3d model and to do this kind of exercise so let me just show you this so i go back i just delete this uh, uh, annotation uh, by the way this annotation also this 3d bridge of course i can also export again as an annotation file and send this annotation file to someone else and then simply my colleague could take it and upload it locally on the publisher in order to visualize how the, the bridge would look like in the same data set. Um, a 3D model, uh, once georeferenced, can also be uh, used in the publisher as a real resource. What does it mean? This is a file uh, which the administration of the publisher can upload uh, as a, as, a, as a vector data, as a shape file, uh, it could be right. But in this case, this is a 3D, is a, a 3D mesh file. Um, if this file has been georeferenced, this can be used as a resource in your publisher, and this can also be used to do measurements on top of this. And uh, and maybe this is something I'm going to uh, to show you how it works. So if I'm going to the resources, I'm opening the resource sidebar, you see that the administrator uploaded also this file, bridge, sestel mesh, that's the name of the 3D file, 3D, 3D model file. I can turn this on, and now this bridge has been, uh, has been loaded, up or uploaded, and there we go, so in a slightly different position than the annotation I created. Uh, you see, this is georeferenced, so this is fitting much better than the annotation which has, I just uploaded. And uh, making use of, uh, of uh, this small one and two boxes, actually you can decide if maybe you would like to display just on top of the imageries. In that case, I can switch off the view from the view number one, if I click on one. Otherwise you can enable from here or visible from the overlay from the, from the spherical imageries. But let's keep it like, like this, for example. So now that I have this, um, what, um, what I can do is uh, I have my 3D model. What I can do is I can go to the measurement functions. 
I can go to distances, for example. And once I'm here, I could, for instance, compute a vertical distance. Uh, but maybe before doing my measurement, I might have I, I have to go to the settings. I go to, need to go to the measuring settings and switch to 3D measurement because I'm not using the point cloud. I'm using actually the mesh. So I click here. I go back, confirm the vertical measurement distance. I can click on one point and then I can click on the ground. And now I have my clearance between this element of the bridge and the road. Or differently, I can zoom in from here. I could take a point on the bottom of the bridge and do my second measurement. And now I have the clearance between my 3D model and the point cloud. And this is a quite nice tool to, to make verifications you know, on, the, on your mobile mapping data how well the design of, uh, in this case, of, of a bridge is, uh, is fitting with, uh, with the reality with the point cloud. So just to, just to make your kind of feasibility studies on, uh, on a project, which in this case could be the realization of, the, of this project. All right, let me just clear the measurement and let me go back to the resources and let me switch off again the, uh, the bridge. And, and by the way, once we have the bridge, yeah, I'm just taking it up again. Um, you can also make use of another interesting tool, which is this one here, which enables you to take the snapshots. Assume you have the, the measurements. Oh, okay, let me just keep the measurement again. Uh, okay, that was the, the distance. I take again one point and take the second. Once you're here, you can also go to your snapshot and then you can decide which view from, from which view you would like to take it. For example, I take it from view number two, which is the one where I have the imagery, the spherical imagery. I just select this and then um, I can click take snapshot and I have this. And I can download as an image file or I can just click here to just to, to visualize this, uh, how, how this snapshot looks like. And then, um, and then you can of course delete. So uh, the images as well can be, um, so file you can uh, you can export and make use uh, to you know as a material supporting your uh, uh, your project. Um, okay, I'm going to switch off the bridge 3D model now, and I want to show you something else, another measurement. Let me just close these measurement functions. Um, I am going now on navigating again to to the bridge, which is uh, the existing one, which is uh, which is in the data set. Uh, which is this one here. And uh, I'm just going here because I want to show you another another tool which is uh, which is uh, which is available here, which is the which is the slice view um, with its own sidebar. For example, here you see that I have this bridge and uh, what I might be interested in is having some geometrical information about the pillars of this existing bridge. So what I can do is I can take this slice uh, view tool. I can specify the way I would like to have um, a slice or, or uh, basically a section created. For example, I would like to create an horizontal slice with one click, one coordinate. I select this tool. I go in here. I just go on my, on my pillar of the bridge. I do my click. And you see here, actually, I can see a section, horizontal, a section of this uh, of the pillar of uh, of the bridge uh, from the mobile mapping view uh, from a 3D view you can see the the sides of your of your intersecting plane. I can play with the thickness of my plane, make it larger or smaller, and I can change the position of the intersection intersecting plane. And once I have this, what I can do also from here is I can go to the measurement tools, and again maybe I can take the distance measurement tools and uh, also from here I can do my measurements and this information can be saved or can be exported or can be used as a as a verification uh, in, in a kind of verification workflow. Um, you can create this kind of uh, uh, you can create horizontal uh, intersection planes or if I go back to here uh, let me just close this view and maybe I show you another another way uh, to create another kind of plane. So just parking the car a little bit further away. Um, another way is uh, creating um, a vertical slice, for example, by picking two coordinates. And this is what I'm going to do now. I just create a new one. For example, I can click one, two, I'm creating this one. 
And now you can see that I have this uh, different kind of view. This is basically a cross-section view. And also for this one, I have the chance to uh, increase the thickness or reduce it. I can just move my vertical intersecting plane and uh, or I can identify here a step to move through my through my data and move the cross section. And also from also from this visualization, visualization, of course, you can take your own measurement tools and just uh, compute your clearances in respect to the, the elements which are visible in the in the in the cross profile. Okay, I'm just going to clear this and uh, then closing this. Uh, and this is uh, this was basically um, the uh, the slicing view you have in the publisher, which again is a tool which gives you the chance to uh, analyze or inquiries or look with a with a deeper understanding of your mobile mapping data which you have been uploading. So um, beside all this. Of course, if you have been enabled by the administrator, you can make use of all the measurement functions which you have. So you can uh, you can measure different kind of measurements. You can do different kind of measurements like point distances. Uh, you could uh, compute uh, a point. You can compute um, vertical offset or clearances. Um, all of these measurements or the extractions which you are doing uh, could be copied inside a kind of a clipboard. And then just going into a notepad, for example, kind of environment, you could paste, paste this information. Uh, this is not something you can store directly into, into, into a layer or into, into a database. Again, you are viewing your data, sharing the data, uh, but not saving this kind of uh, measurement or extraction uh, in, a, in a layer. Or if you're extracting points, uh, actually the result of your point extractions, if you're going to, to save those, they are kind of stored in, in the cache. And then these can could be, for example, downloaded as a O3M file or could be uh, or could be downloaded as a as a as a KML file, for example, to just to upload on a Google Earth, for example, to, to see where these objects are. Uh, but basically, basically this is it. Basically, that's the way you can uh, measure or extract information and export locally the file containing this information. So again, probably this this is also explaining why probably we don't consider the the publisher with this kind of access I'm showing you right now as a real production uh, environment, but mostly as a kind of data um, sharing environment. Um, the story is a little bit different if you use the publisher with plugins. And this is what I would like to show you uh, right now. I'm just closing the, uh, the publisher, the publication now, and then going back to the slides. So when you're using a plugin, as I was commenting earlier, the plugin gives you the chance to connect a publication to your data management uh, software. Um, you need your user, you need a publisher, of course, somewhere install it and with publications available. You need your account, your username and password. And uh, and um, basically, as soon as you start the plugin from your software plugin, um, you have um, a browser which comes automatically open it with the publication. And what you have at the end. A two-way real-time communication uh, between your application, this is a QGIS installation, for instance, and the publication through your browser. So everything you are doing, uh, everything you are extracting in uh, in the publication through the, the browser interface gets visual, visualized on your uh, application, like QGIS here again, and can be stored exactly in your data management publication. And uh, what I would like to do is I would like to try to to show you this live. So just give me give me a second. Let me go to QGIS, and I think I need to try to see how I can share both of my screen. Uh, show screen uh, both screens. I think you should be able now to see uh, both 
off the screen. Uh, okay. Um, if not, I just asked the I just asked the organizer who in the meanwhile got connected. Uh, so if you can just confirm that, otherwise, okay, anyway, I'm keep going with with this. Um, okay, so this is a QGIS, and um, from here, basically, um, you have the chance to. Um, you can see here there is a toolbar, which is the, uh, the which is the um, the plugin for the for the publisher, and uh, and from here basically I can click on this command here, and as soon as I click here, um, the plugin is opening a publication. Okay, uh, this publication I'm just bringing this to the second monitor, okay, because probably it makes life easier for um, navigation and I am opening the publication I'm uh, I'm interested in and as soon as the application is loaded you can see on the QGIS here for example that I can see the trajectory actually this is not really the trajectory but this is the camera positions where the system has been collecting photographs I can see that two views are open at this moment view number one and view number two and actually this is what I can see on the on the other monitor, I can see. I hope you can do the same. Um, you have I have the point cloud view and the spherical view on the on the background uh, on the on the lower part of the screen. And um, I was commenting that there is a real time two way communication. And uh, yeah, you can see that because if I'm now rotating the view number two uh, from the publication, you see that the icon or the symbol of the view on the public on the in QGIS, for example, is changing, is rotating as well accordingly to what I'm doing here. Now, uh, how the plugin can be seen as a production environment? Um, you can see that um, here I have created a layer in QGIS. So uh, there is a lamp post layer. I can maybe show the attribute table. I just created some real basic attributes number id the date of the extraction the status the, uh, the height of lamp and then uh, uh, another column uh, where i need to when i'm when i will fill in the attribute fields basically when i'm flagging on a, on the a box i am uh, basically commenting yes a visit needs to be planned or no a visit doesn't have to be planned for this specific feature so basically that's the structure or that that's the schema of this uh, layer I just created. Um, I close the attribute table. If I am going to do what I have to do first is I need to make this editable. So I just enable or toggle editing. So now this layer is active to be to be edited. And what I'm going to do is um, maybe I am going to start from here from the very very beginning of the run to start extracting my my folks. And what I can do is I can take this tool here from the plugin, uh, pick a location. So if I click here, then if I if I enable this uh, function and if I click on my um, camera positions on the plugin, uh, you see that on the on publication directly, uh, I am opening that specific views, a point cloud view and image view. And here I have some um, I have some some posts which I maybe this is what I need to start extracting. And saving the result into my layer loading in QGIS. So what I can do is once I'm here from the publisher, I can go to the uh, measurement tools. This is going to be a point. So I take this function here because I want also to have the height of the length respect to the round. I do my first click to identify the reference surface, and then I do my second click. On the lamp, and I have this 8.4, so this is the vertical height. So I have created the point, I have extracted the position in the publisher. Now, if I'm going to zoom in in, in the QGIS, you see this yellow dot. Actually, this is the point I, I am creating through the plugin. This point at the moment is, is not stored yet into my layer. To save this into my layer, what I have to do is maybe I'm going to select 
mine layer. And then I can click on this tool here, which is add the measurement to the active layer. So I am doing this. So now these points belong to my layer. And what I can do is, for example, I can take this tool, I can go in here and I can say, okay, for example, this is the point 200 by the date. So basically now I'm just providing information which are belonging to the, to the structure of the schema of the structure of this uh, layer I created. The status, maybe this is a good status. The lamp height, this was the famous 8.44 I measured through the uh, plugin. And then I can say, yeah, in this case, a visit is needed for whatever reason. So I'm just flagging on this box and just saying, okay, this information has been stored in my uh, QGIS layer. Now what I can do is I can go, for example, in my second, uh, in my second uh, poll, which I want to visit. So again, do the same exercise. I put one point there on the ground, then one point on the top, then I have this one, which is 8.6. Uh, I'm going to save this object. This is the object. I have been saving this into the application. Now I just open the, uh, the tool. So this is the point 201. Uh, again, I just confirm the date and I provide the status, for example, I don't know, this is that condition. The height was 8.62. And maybe, yeah, in this case, maybe also a visit is needed. I just take a last one, right? And then I will just show you something else. And then I go to the to the to a last point, so to a last poll. In some exercise, I'm going to just go and save it to my layer. I just look at the attribute, the feature attribute list. This is the point 202. I just confirm date. This is the date, the status. This is location. This is 8.55. And maybe in this case, no, a visit is not needed. So I'm not flying this bug. I'm just saying, okay. So once finished, I have my uh, three uh, objects which has been extracted. I can close if I want the, uh, the editing function through the toggle editing. I just save my edits. And um, I have my three objects which are here available. And uh, I can show you the attribute table. So here is information I've been extracting uh, from the data which were available uh, through the through the plugin, which means the publication. I see the attributions here, and um, as you can as you could uh, probably see, I was not saving actually nothing here on the on the publisher. So nothing and has been stored here in the cache. So um, I can do that if I would like to. I mean, as soon as I'm extracting this object, I can also click here and save my uh, po the points I am extracting. And so these points would be visible. Let's overlay on the point cloud and on the spherical images. Uh, but what is also possible uh, through, the, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the plugin is I can select the three light poles, for example, these ones I'm selecting right now. And then there is, uh, there is uh, uh, this function here add the selected object as overlay to the viewer. So the viewer basically is the publication. So if I'm going to click here, you see that now these three objects are visible as well on the publication. So uh, there are some limitations. In this case, I cannot see any labels. I cannot see the attributes, but I can see those objects, okay? So I can, if for some reason, I like, might like to see where I've been extracting and where the data and which are the polls which I still need to uh, to visit and extract through the plugins? That's the way you can also see in real time what have been already extracted and what is actually also missing. Um, um, so you have seen everything I'm doing here from the from the uh, from the publisher gets visible in through the plugins into my uh, software application which I'm running. And um, I can show you uh, also why not a bit quickly a line, how a line can be extracted. In this case, I don't have a line layer in QGIS created, but just to show you how uh, the creation of a line uh, is, is looking instead of, instead of uh, making use of the, of the plugins. Actually, it's a real, uh, real two-way communication. You see, as soon as I'm clicking, you see that there is a line which is created 
Nikki.js, and which is following exactly the instruction I'm doing writing the publication. Then I do my double click, the line has been created. And again, if I would have had the layer here, polyline layer created in QGIS, this polyline could have been um, uh, stored and saved directly into the um, into my QGIS publication. Okay, I'm just going to clear this and stop the measurement tool. So this is uh, this is in general the, um, the the kind of use you can uh, the use you can do of the plugins, and from this point of view. Yeah, the data uploaded into the publisher can really be considered as a, as a resource you can really make use for production. All the layer management, all the layer creation organization is something which can be handled directly in, uh, in QJS in this case. Uh, for example, you can create your layer here locally or maybe it will be linked to, um, to, a, to an existing database and maybe the data you're extracting from the publisher through QGIS are maybe going to be stored directly into your database. So this is really uh, a production environment where you can make use of the extraction functions or features in the, uh, which the publisher makes available and save the result of your feature directly into some uh, specific layers or tables of, uh, of uh, a database. Okay, let me just close the publisher and uh, uh, let me go back, uh, discard this, discard the project, and let me go just go back to the slide deck. And I'm going to try to go back to uh, screen uh, to share only one monitor. Uh, so this one here. Okay, you should be able now again to look at my main screen. Um, okay. Now the the last uh, the last way I'd like to show you to get access to the data available in the publisher is through ArcMap Online. So basically, um, using an ArcMap Online account and the Web App Builder function of the ArcMap Online, actually you can create uh, specific applications, right? Um, which you can later on run on a tablet or maybe even on a, on a smartphones. Why not? And uh, what is available um, is a widget. Uh, actually, through the ArcMap Online and a Web App Builder, we have different widgets available created by different users, uh, which you could uh, uh, with which you could customize your application. And the, the nice thing is that there is a widget which enables you to open the, the publication data directly into your ArcMap online uh, applications. And um, to do this, uh, of course, you need your uh, ArcMap online account. You need to have installed your web app builder. And, uh, and basically, when you start the specific widget, which I'm going to show now, you are going to open a connection to, uh, to a publication. Um, now, the widget I'm showing you now is, uh, is quite basic. So you can uh, navigate through your mobile mapping data. You can uh, do measurement. You can, uh, you can extract 3D uh, positions. Uh, but at the moment, this is not configured to save the result of the extraction inside maybe specific layers which are available inside your project in, in uh, ArcMap Online. But uh, if you are clever enough, of course, you can, uh, you can edit the existing widget or maybe you can even create new ones so that uh, the result of extractions you are doing through these widgets can be directly saved and stored uh, with some logic inside the layer which you have created into your ArcMap uh, online map. In, in this case, again, the publisher uh, data can be used for a production workflows, but again, as a kind of validation tool because you could actually maybe uh, as you're traveling or you can visit the site, you can have your tablet with you, you can connect to the to, to your application, to your map, your mobile mapping data to the publisher, and then you can do your uh, verification exercise 
directly through uh, through this tool. Uh, I need to. I want to show you the way it works. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm connected at the moment. I'm connecting to to a tablet, um, and this is the tablet which I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Chrome because I need to connect to ArcMap online. And actually, I'm going to connect to my specific application. So I just click on the link to the application. I need to provide username and password to get connected to my ArcGIS online account in order to be able to see my application. I just confirm that. And, and actually, this is, a, this is the um, application I've been building up. And what you can see at the moment is simply there is a background map. And there is a, if I zoom in, um, you can see that there is some data uh, which has been already uh, extracted, and these data actually are saved inside a layer which belongs to the ArcMac online project. Okay, and this is the same scenario I showed you earlier on that motorway. And uh, as I said, you can you can actually uh, once you are in ArcMap and with a web app builder, you can um, decide to make use of different widgets. For example, I just downloaded one which would give you the chance to to do, them, to do some editing of some features which are inside your map. Uh, but interesting for this webinar is this widget here. So this widget here, basically, as soon as I click, is opening a connection again to the publication which has been uploaded into the publisher. So you see, I have this mapping widget which is opening. The widget is opening the, the data sets, the point cloud and the, and the camera view. And maybe in the meanwhile that this is loading, I will just do something like this. Maybe I'm just going to position this somewhere else, or maybe make my life easier for, for viewing. And I'm loading the resources. And you see, I have my spherical imagery is loaded on the view number two. I have my point cloud data set uh, loaded on the view number one. And um, on the 2D map of my Arc Map online project, you see that uh, the, the data set uh, from the publication has been loaded as well. You see here that I have my V1 and V2 visible here. And um, probably uh, in this kind of visualization, it doesn't make too much sense also to have a 2D map loaded down here on the bottom right. And this is the 2D map visualization from the publication. So if I would like to remove this, I can go to the uh, workspace and I can say none just to hide the, the 2D map from my uh, displayed uh, through my widget. And uh, similar to the plugin, uh, when I'm rotating, you see that I'm rotating here and I'm also rotating the, um, the views directly. Uh, the icon is changing as well inside my ArcMap online tool. And uh, so again, two way. Uh, real-time communication or connection between the publisher and the ArcMap online uh, solution. Um, what I like to do maybe is uh, I can go to here and set this to full screen. So if I'm setting this to full screen, actually what I'm looking at, what I'm seeing is I can see the data sets as if I'm just navigating inside the publisher. So once I'm here again, I, I can make use of the different tools I have in the publication. I, I can now navigate through my data set as I was doing earlier. And also from here, of course, I can, as I was showing you earlier, I can go, I can switch to the, to the synchronized views. I can close, so actually I can navigate through my data and, uh, and the, um, and the, um, and the camera views will be updated accordingly as well. Uh, what I was trying to do is I would like to go again where I have the bridge and to to show you something what can be done. Okay, here I think we reached. Uh, where, yeah, it might take a little bit of time. It depends really from uh, how fast or how good or bad is your into the connection. Okay, I'm approaching my bridge, and in this case, maybe the exercise I want to do is is uh, I would like maybe to. To take a measurements maybe or to 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 look at the um, the clearances uh, to have a look to the clearances information from the from this bridge maybe respect to the to the to the new jersey new jersey barrier which is uh, which is visible here so maybe i just drive a little bit further closer 
uh, car in the position where maybe it makes more sense. And uh, as soon as this is done, I can uh, I can go here on the I can go here on the left, and uh, here on the left view I can uh, I can again take the uh, the measurement tools, and I can uh, take again uh, for example this vertical uh, um, this vertical measurement tool. I just park the car a little bit closer again. Okay, and uh, I go into my measurement functions. And from here, I say I want to measure distance. I can again pick this one. Uh, maybe what I can do is uh, uh, navigate uh, into my data set. Maybe one position on the, uh, maybe one not on the on the New Jersey barrier. And then this position has been picked directly from the uh, from the point cloud. And then maybe what I can do is I can zoom in maybe from the image. And then I can take my second measurement maybe directly from the from the, from the image. So the first point from the point cloud the second one from the image, and there you go. So in this case, again, I was able to uh, do a measurement directly from, um, from the publications. Uh, in this case, making use of this uh, widget from, uh, from ArcMap online. And if I, if I would have been able to configure my, or create a new widget able to store this distance measurement into the layer of my ArcMap online that's it then i would be able to store or to transfer this information directly inside ArcMap. and uh, and of course all the other functions which i was um, which i was showing you earlier uh just browsing into the data are uh, all of them are still um, uh, are still available i could uh, for example again i could go to my annotation i could start creating my annotation also for here, uh, for example, if I want to identify the dangerous or area which I maybe need for some uh, analysis, I can start building up my uh, or extracting, creating my my annotation, and to be maybe shared later on to the office with. Also, from this point of view, uh, the data sets which has been loaded into the publisher can really uh, be considered data sets which you can use for real production tasks. Um, yeah, so this said, I think this is uh, I think this is all I wanted to, to show you about the different way you can um, make use of your um, publisher, uh, data set loaded into the publisher. I, I apologize, I, I'm pretty sure I'm not the first center where but i'm pretty sure we had some technical issues at the, at the very beginning uh i think we are going to definitely there will be recording for this and um in case you might have any any questions i would just recommend maybe you to drop the email drop one email to this uh, email address here and uh, and then we will be more than happy answering to uh, to your questions. Uh, actually, I can see here that there is a there is some which are available here. So I will uh, I will just uh, I will just uh, answer directly uh, in a second moment. So I think this is it for the moment. Thanks very much for attending. Again, I apologize for any technical issues we might have had during this presentation. And uh, yeah, thanks and have a good day.